Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Library Commission's weekly online event where we cover various commission activities and anything that may be of interest to Nebraska librarians. We do these sessions um, free every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. And if you cannot attend a live session, they are all recorded. We have going on almost two years worth now of recordings that you can go out and um, listen and watch the archives. Today we have some guest speakers with us and as you can see from the screen you're seeing the website we are going to be talking about um, the recently held, well last month, um, NLA NEMA annual conference. And I am going to unmute our three speakers if I can. There we go. Um, and we have some three people from NLA and NEMA that are going to talk. And I'm going to have you guys introduce yourselves, if you don't mind. Oh, I also should say I have here with me today also Michael Sowers, our uh, technology innovation librarian from the Library Commission, who did a lot of um, video and picture taking at the conference. So he's running around all over the place. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I have some input as well into what, have, what was going on in various locations. <laughs> so um, I'm going to have you guys introduce yourself, and I'll start with you, um, Karen, if you want to just um, say who you are, where you're from, why you're here. <laughs> okay. I'm Karen Buckley. I'm the librarian at Pius X High School in Lincoln, and I'm currently president-elect of NEMA, which means I'll be planning next year's conference with um, NLA. Ah. So you're looking for some tips, okay. hopefully, I guess. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> okay, um, Christy, how about you go next? Um, I'm Christine Walsh, and I'm the Assistant Library Director at the Kearney Public Library, and I am the current president of NLA. Okay, and Scott. Hi, uh, my name is Scott Childers. I'm the Emerging Technologies Librarian at UNL, and I'm the past president of NLA. Okay, great. So, um, everybody who's here was at NLA NEMA this year, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> correct. I still remember that far back. Yeah, it was quite a few weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> so, I just wanted, I just have, um, wanted us to do some talking about what went on at the conference, what you thought was interesting, fun, different. Um, uh, many overall impressions of the conference itself, like any um, continuing themes throughout it, anything um, that you guys thought of about it. And anybody can go ahead and pipe up. Like I said, I've got you all unmuted. So. Um, this is Christy, and I think that the keynotes were highlights of the um, conference got lots and lots of positive feedback on both of them, even though they had very different um, focuses and different delivery styles. And bless their hearts for dealing with all the technological challenges that we had during their presentations. But um, lots of positive feedback on them. Um, the Freedom Writers, I thought, was a really great way to end conference. Um, they had lots of inspirational things to say, not only for librarians, but also for all of the teachers um, and people in all kinds of other capacities within the library world. And they certainly were receptive to um, continuing conversations and questions from us. And, um, you know, would be happy to come back, I'm sure. So. Oh. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I liked their their um keynote. It was very um lots of high energy. Very exciting. I was very impressed with both of the um people, the both of them that they sent for to speak. Um, I thought it was the best thing. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> um, and we um and just very inspiring. Makes you want to go out and do something with your life. I guess kind of thing. <laughs> It, it does, and, you know, what they had to overcome to get to where they are today, I think, is just phenomenal. If you haven't read the book, to go and read that original Freedom Writers Diary or roam around their Freedom Writers Foundation site. Mm -hmm. um, lots of great resources, and um, 
the per, Lisa Smith, who was my contact there, was extremely responsive. I mean, she responded quickly to all of our inquiries and many questions and making sure that this event was set up to be a success. So I'm sure she would welcome comments or um, inquiries as well. Yep, and they even have right here on the site where you can buy. I would agree to. Book. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that I would agree that they were absolutely fabulous, and I was really excited when Sherrod um, said that he was a teacher, and I thought all of his experience to bring in the classroom um, was just a fabulous, happy ending to a story. And here, here's where you can buy the books and the movie. They did, were, didn't have it made into a movie. Um, and they were on Primetime Live. I'm not sure if that was the video that they showed yes. at the beginning. Okay. The segment that it was is. the beginning. Yeah. Now, I know Joe Murphy was the other keynote that we had. And he had some, well, we had some technical difficulties with him, I guess. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I saw Joe um, two weeks later at Internet Librarian, and, and, and he did comment that... Um, Despite the technical difficulties, um, he, he really did enjoy uh, his trip mm -hmm. uh, yes. and, and um, was, was fun getting out to Nebraska, he enjoyed the conference, uh, said he had a brand new experience at conference. He went to a bar where people were wearing overalls. Oh, really? I yes. didn't know that. <laughs> okay. that, that, that. That was a new experience for him. Uh, so See, yeah, he, he had a good time. Something we take for granted. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> That someone from working at Yale just wouldn't... He's yeah. at Yale. Yeah. Yes, yes, Yale University. <laughs> See, everybody can learn something new. <laughs> um, I thought his talk was good once he was able to do it. I felt bad that it was so shortened. I'm sure there was something lost in the having to um, <coughs> modify it. Um, but it did get recorded. Mm -hmm. um, both of the, of the keynotes were. And um, Joe's right now just... Just uploaded this morning. Mm -hmm. um, it right now it's in kind of a full blown Windows Media big download sort of version, but in the next day or two, it should convert into something that can can stream and, and be embedded in, in other websites. I'm sure we'll get it on the NLA site, um, that sort of thing. Um, the Freedom Riders were recorded, but um, we are under some restrictions about how much of that we can release. Um, so as as soon as I get a free, you know. I don't know, day <laughs> somewhere in all this. I, I will I will get through that recording and and uh, pull some parts out that we can share with the people who weren't able to attend. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for doing those recordings. It's greatly appreciated. Yeah, um, it was also interesting. We we uh, attempted to live stream uh, Joe Murphy, and we had some technical issues on our end mm -hmm. with that. Um, so actually, we were streaming video but no audio. Uh, that was you know unfortunate. Uh, we, we were able to fix that. We did live stream the, the Freedom Riders, yep. um, and I think about a dozen people tuned in to that yeah. uh, while it was going on. So we did have some people uh, throughout the state watching that who weren't able to attend. So once we, again, figured out our technical issues, uh, we were able to do that. Yeah, definitely. I think since we figured out the technical, the way that we should be doing it, um, it's new equipment. <laughs> <laughs> that this could be a regular thing, that if people cannot attend, um, that and the keynotes can definitely be streamed live. Um, we had a lot of interest in it. We did announce it, which didn't even get announced until that week, like the day or two the before. The day before, I think. Um, I had lots of replies to, I sent the emails out and posts to different places, um, Facebook and Twitter and, and whatnot. Um, yeah, a lot of responses from people saying, oh, thank you so much. I'm not able to to make it to um, Grand Island this year. So, um, oh, we'll yes, sir. Yeah, well, and, uh, <laughs> sirens are going off in yeah. Lincoln. <laughs> no, it's it's our weekly Wednesday, and Scott had mentioned <laughs> um, this is our weekly Wednesday um, tornado siren test. Yes. yes, happens every Wednesday cool. at 15 or so in the morning. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we had a lot of people that responded to me and said, this is great. Thank you so much. I can't make it to NLA um, this year. I'm so glad at least I can see something that came from that's happening at it. So, um, you know, with the way budgets and things are nowadays, people can't always travel to wherever it's, any conferences are. So I think it's just a great thing, and hopefully we'll 
um, do it next year too. No reason I think why we shouldn't be able to. No. And then who the keynotes are. Yep. All comes down to permissions. We have the technical ability. Yeah. (laughs) Excellent. Um. Okay. So um, let's get into some um, details about the conference. Any particular sessions that anybody attended that you thought were um, useful, fun, interesting, or that you heard people talking about? I mean, sometimes there's a lot of talk in the hallways and and at lunches and, and dinners and things. Um, anybody have anything uh, that really caught your attention? Regular or pre-conference? Um, I always... I always enjoy Sally Snyder's um, from like Library Commission when she presents Beth Youth books. Um, oh yes. And and she was very lucky. Sure until I hear what excellent session and it's always well attended. Yep, that one we did also video. Oh, this is what okay. Yep, yep. I'm I'm just trying to get to the. Oh oh oh! I had it. There we go. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot, in addition to the um, keynotes that we live streamed and recorded, as many as possible of commission staff? or Yeah, or most, most of the commission sponsored or commission speakers were videoed. Um, both my sessions, Sally's, Krista's two sessions. Emily's, Emily's session. Emily's um, we, we weren't able to get everybody because we only had one camera and sometimes there were multiple speakers at the same time. Um, and there's, there's still only one of me, uh, so <coughs> running around was fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did my own. Yeah, 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 yeah well, that's right. That's right. We did have two cameras. Yeah, going. we had two. Yeah. Um, and actually, this is good that you mentioned that, Karen, that this is a great one and is recorded here, but also I have also... Um, got Sally to recreate this session because it is a very popular one. I mean, this was amazing. She's the, she was the last session on a f- Friday. So you would think people are on their way out the door. Her room was packed, overpacked. I mean, this is, yeah, one of the very popular sessions of what she's doing. Um, so since I was also there um, helping out, um, I've gotten her, got her to do uh, next week's Encompass Live will actually be um, – um, Sally recreating this session for us here on Encompass Live. So if you weren't able to attend the live one, um, you can also you can watch the video, or you can come next week and um, hear Sally do it again. <laughs> um, some of the other ones we have here, as Michael's saying, um, I did tech planning on work sh- um, session about webinars. Uh, See, Michael did a session on e-readers. Well, actually, some not all that's from conference. Some of that's from other. Oh, okay. So. Um, best use oh, okay. uh, my QR codes, Emily. Emily's link data, Joe's keynotes, um, let's get social is not from there. So there's other things here um, that are from other stuff. Yeah, really yeah, there's, that, yeah. These, those are just commissioned videos. Mm-hmm. So. I heard rave reviews about um, Michael's Google Secrets session. Ah, that was a packed one. That was wasn't packed. <laughs> yeah. I, I, w- I was in this, the, one of the smaller rooms, and, and there was kind of standing room only. Um, and that one was also recorded, but it hasn't gotten up yet. Um, and that was on oh, Thursday or Friday. How's that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's one of those days? Was Friday, uh, Friday morning, I think. And um, it was fun. That one seems to be very popular. I've been doing that one. Uh, I've done it like three or four times in the last month at different locations. Um, never the same twice. Google's always doing something. Oh, there's always different. something new to talk about, yeah. yeah. In fact, I started out talking about the Google car. Um, oh, yes. So, uh, in that one. so like, like I said, it's a Google world. We're just living in it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> now that we got that clarified. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, you need to know who the overlords are. Um, Absolutely. And, and it's, it's no longer Microsoft. It's now Google, I think. And someone oh, suggested that, <clears throat> that you could have done multiple sessions, and that would have been great. So maybe something to keep in mind for next year. Sure. I, I mean, <laughs> repeats or just more topics. I mean, I, I you know, even the, the bookmarks from the session, which are, which are still up on Delicious. Uh, you know, I think both. I think for the people that did, weren't able to attend, mm-hmm. you know, um, the updates and then 
additional topics if you have the, you know, what's happened in the last 12 months sort of thing for next year. I think people yep. would welcome both of those. Sure, like a regular Google search. <coughs> yeah. You almost do that monthly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah true. <laughs> Just add it to your tech talks. Uh, hmm? This guy's added to your tech talks. Oh, yeah, there we go. Well, I, I did it as a, as a, I've done it as an Encompass session. That was the first time I did a it. A while ago. Yeah, a yeah. while ago. Uh, Maybe that's something you should create, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, I haven't did a couple of times. <laughs> there you go. Um, what about you, Scott? Anything interesting that you were I'm able to attend that. during the conference? I know you guys are also very busy running the conference, so it's hard to attend things, but... <laughs> well, uh, one session, uh, just if I can throw this in, I don't know if there's a bit of a lag here or not. But, uh, Karen Dalzell's session on marketing. I thought was a really good one. Mm -hmm. and, you know, these librarians tend to throw everything we can into our flyers and, and press releases. And she had a really good message on minimalism. Uh -huh. and, actually, I think that would, might be a good one uh, to ask her to do on an Encompass Live. It was a really good, uh, I think that was Friday morning. Was that the design crash course? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's a, a full room, and um, she just had a good message on, hey, you know, don't be, uh, fight against our stereotype. Leave them hanging. <laughs> we everything all at once. But we need to tell them everything. I would... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If we tell them everything, then they won't come into the door. <laughs> That's right. Were you going to say something, Karen? Oh, I was just going to say one of the ones that I think is always really popular is the Golden Soul presentation. Mm -hmm. um, and just watching the children as they present their award is kind of, I always consider that one of my little rewards for being a librarian. <coughs> it's just kind of a special opportunity. Mm -hmm. To see the kids there, yeah. And just the interaction between the author and the students presenting the awards and, and what they pick up on. and It's, it's just really a highlight. Um, we were lucky this year that we did have the authors present. Um, last year we did techno, we, we did like a webcam award. And the authors were great, but it just missed that aspect of the students during the presentation. So it was really exciting that we had an author this year. Yeah. That's good. Did anybody attend any of the pre-conferences that were host that were held? I know. Um, I went to the Black Belt Librarian, and Warren was wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's somebody. It would be great if we could get him into a lot of libraries just to work with the individual staffs on their, you know, specific um, concerns and frustrations, or um, providing those tools that they need in their day-to-day -day setting. So um, I think he was great. Right. And I know, Scott, you were at our library camp. Yep. That might go my, on. My second one. Mm -hmm. uh, it, that was, it brings out the crowd in, in the library camp. Just whoever the crowd is, it just changes the way it goes. So mm -hmm. the first one was a completely different experience than this, than this second one I went to. I'm sure you guys... I don't know if you guys have the same things that you were helping run the thing. Uh, well, it, well it, it, you get so much perspective. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was it was our third library camp, but only the second one we were at. That, yeah. <laughs> due due to weather issues last year, um, but I you know compared to the first one, we, we we had about half the people we had in the first one. Mm -hmm. So and and by no means do do I want to say that that you know lessened the value. Oh, no. At all, it's um, conversation draw. But yeah, it, there were there were kind of fewer conversations, mm -hmm. fewer topics because of the smaller group. And yeah, it is kind of a slightly different experience each time. Um, you know, it's 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 fun to watch all the catalogers get into a room and, and hear what, you know, <laughs> what their concerns are, and um, <coughs> and, uh, and and the other. I, I, at this point, I've almost kind of forgotten the topics. I've been doing so many conferences in the last month that, that they're all starting to blur together a little bit on me. Um, 
<coughs> but yeah, I, I mean, we definitely plan on doing it again next year. That, that's for sure. Um, yeah, and definitely, it's, like you said, it's different every time because of who you get is going to determine what the topics are. Yeah. And you're never going to have the same experience each time because you have a different, a different group of people getting together with different problems, issues, concerns, whatever, um, and just what's going on at the time. Um, here's the website coming, coming up very slowly <laughs> for it. Um, what do we have under session notes? Yep, what session notes should, should list notes to the... Uh... <clears throat> and it is running slow. Yeah. I'm going to another unconference this Saturday in Topeka. So, yeah. Um, I think they're fun. Anybody who's listening to this must come next year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll have that going on. Um, Krista, I'm going to mute me at 10.30 and at 10.35 so we don't have a school bell ringing. Just so you know. <laughs> Understandable. Because I am broadcasting from Pius. Yes. That's when your class is... Oh, here we go. Here's some of our session topics. Um, there's a specific session for the school libraries um, mm -hmm. that got together, which is great to have. Um, we had a bunch of people from school libraries there. Social networking, of course. Um, we all got together at the end to do a thing about e-books, um, information mm -hmm. overload, things like that. Um, Mobile technology cataloging. Blue, Blue Sky was interesting, and 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 Scott led that, and it was it was a wonderful idea. But I, I, either we were all tired, or we were all <laughs> just um, depressed over the state of our budgets. That we we, we were having <laughs> you're having trouble coming up with what would we do if we had money. Um, yeah, we always came back, but we don't have money. Yeah, right. <laughs> but that's okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it was a combination of, of, of both of those. We were it was at the end. We were kind of tired, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, yeah, we we're just dealing with budget times this time of year. So, oh well, we tried. <laughs> yeah, well, it was still a good discussion. I mean, it it, 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 it it didn't necessarily go I think where we expected it to go, um, but but the conversation happened, and I I think that that's always the important bit. Mm -hmm. um, right. you know, just just talking it out, even if it doesn't end up where you thought it was going to end up. Mm -hmm. That's so great. We've got all of the um, notes that people took. It looks like a lot of people posted stuff up on here mm -hmm. afterwards as well. Yep. Um, so if you weren't able to attend, you can see what was brought up and discussed and what people thought um, of the topic at the time, which is great. And you have someone commented on it. Oh, hey. Uh, uh, more items in the UNL Digital Commons. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Thirty to 40,000 more. I wow. wow. There's a project that I have. I was just say metadata, yeah, go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not a cataloger. I don't worry about that. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I just scan it. <laughs> very good, very good. I think that blue sky, and I'm sorry I wasn't able to get over to that one, um, is a great thing for us because it forces us to stretch and think, you know, sometimes you've got to get out of your own box and whether it's a reality or not to do the what ifs and maybe down the road one of those, you find a different solution to reach that goal, whether you have incredible funding or limited funding. Mm -hmm. Well, and and I'm going to try to maybe t I, I just something just popped into my head with 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 what you said in that um, I think it was um, who did the gaming session a couple of weeks ago for for um, Encompass Live. Um, oh, JP for no 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 no. Uh, oh, Susan, Susan oh, uh, Susan Franklin. Yeah, Susan Hastings Franklin. Hastings. Hastings. She was she was saying that they they held their first gaming night and then I think that the, the provost or the dean for for student affairs came around and she mentioned it and she just happened to say but you know here's what we could do if we had more money and he gave her the money yeah and yeah, so she, if, she if, just happened to mention yeah it. if yeah. you don't if you don't have those ideas already in your head of here's what we could do if we had money you could miss an opportunity to say to somebody here's what we could do if we had money and then and then actually get it so even if you can't necessarily do it now, having those ideas available to pull out when necessary is a really good idea. And to seize those opportunities when you have those, um, you know, stakeholders yep. to say, hey, what if, 
or did you know? Because they don't always know. No, it, it gives you something to work towards, as opposed to worry about day by day. Here's all the awful things that we have to deal with. Well, if we have something to look forward to, uh, this is where we're going. So there's all things that you could do if you once in a while uh, take a look and see what what is our blue sky. Because mm -hmm. so you never know how things can change. You know, next week. Yep. The other session I heard great things about was the Hey Kids, Look What We've Got, Effective Marketing to Tweens and Teens. And I did not personally attend that, but a um, big part of the session this person said was the energy and enthusiasm of the presenters and that this is a hard group to, for people to reach, so it's vital, but very vital to the um, future of libraries. So um, they were very excited about that, and I know that that room was packed and um, unfortunately had nowhere else to go. <laughs> so they could have accommodated a larger, a larger, bleh, larger audience than we could get in the room. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Jake Rundle from Keene, he's very good with the kids. Yeah, he does a lot of, he's a very... Um, candy affairs. Is Jake who I'm thinking of? <sighs> Somebody came in, yeah, after my session one and put out a whole bunch of candy on the table. Yes, okay, I know Jake, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that yeah. might have been that Recent one. Recent grad. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Jake was at gaming night. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, he also did this one. This is the one with Popcorner M&M's, the public library's okay. mission to entertain. Yep. Mm-hmm. That was the one that followed mine first thing in the morning. My webinar session I had at 9, at whatever, 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And then at 9 o'clock, they came in and put out M&Ms and chocolate and candy <laughs> for the next session. Where were you for my session? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. I was really glad that the, um, the recent grads were willing to do a poster session um, mm -hmm. and share their experiences because it's so important to encourage all of the new, you know, new people in the library world um, and give them a forum for getting their ideas and new experiences out because we don't always have that opportunity to share um, when we get back to our own organizations. Yeah, I think it's great. We had a lot of um, recent graduates and there was that one session, the, um, yeah, the, uh, one of the final sessions on, on Friday, one year out, four recent graduates talk about life after library school. Yes. Um, I wasn't at that one because I was at Sally's helping out there, but I heard that, that was a very popular one that people were interested in wanting to know, you know, there are still people coming into the field, yay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And they're staying and they're doing well. And um, So I know that was a very interesting one. Um, and Emily, our cataloger from here, is one of those people. And Karen Dalziel, who I already mentioned, was one of them. And then Marcia from UNL and uh, Kevin Kelly from here in Lincoln City Libraries. Oh, wow. I didn't realize Marcia and Catherine were graduates. Um, huh. recent, yeah, so, well, a year or so, up, yeah. Yeah. When you're, they're not like recent, as of like this year. Right, but, right. Yeah. Basically, this is a session of <clears throat> we've graduated, now we've got our jobs, and it's been a year or so. Well, how is it going? <laughs> <laughs> Was this a good idea? <laughs> I, I, I graduated 15 years ago. I'm still waiting for the great retirement. <laughs> okay. Let me know when that comes through. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> Because, you know, it's any day now. That, that's, that's, you know, keep telling us that. Okay. <laughs> Run with that right thought. Now. <sighs> if it doesn't, perhaps right now, they'll just close those lines. We have to wait till the economy bounces back. Then they can retire. Yes. Yeah. Then we can okay. lines and fill them. <coughs> okay. I know that, um, Karen, you put together a little presentation about what NEMO is doing at conference. Yeah, and I... If you like, I can I can switch over to you if you want to go through that for us. Uh, sure, I'd lo I'd love to do that. Let me. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. Are you ready? Okay, hold on. Uh, you should be able to share your screen. Okay. Uh, one of the things we do is NEMA has a new logo, and so this was the first time we unveiled it. Um, going along with our new logo. Um, we also hosted a session called What's in a Name, 
Um, what we're doing is that in the past year, the, Nebraska, the American Association of School Librarians formally adopted the title of School Librarians for librarians working in schools. Um, following suit, um, states, including the state of Nebraska and educational programs, are changing titles um, from media specialist or educational media to school librarians hmm. and school library programs. And so NEMA is wondering if we should be changing our name to um, better match up with this new, um, our formalized mm -hmm. title to, to, to Unity. Um, we had a pretty lively debate. It seemed like the consensus would be the Nebraska School Library Association. Um, but we are not going to be changing the name until we have a formal vote. And we're not saying that this is going to be the name. So that, that's still um, up for for a discussion and, and a vote by our members. Mm -hmm. um, also with our um, new logo, we did have the new edition of the Nebraska Guide. And all our members um, have that for member benefit that they are entitled to one copy of this program. If you are um, not a member of NEMA and you do want the program, you can buy this through um, Libraries Unlimited. Um, here's a picture of Joe Murphy, and he was introduced by our President Betty Meyer. Oh yeah. Um, and then at our luncheon meeting, our annual luncheon meeting, um, Jean Bergstrom's retiring from the board, so she was recognized for her service. Um, Carrie Turner um, received the Past President Award um, that was given to her by Betty. And then our presidential award went to Dr. Sherry Crow, Judy Henning, and Deb Levital, and also Lori Olmstead, who's not um, pictured. Um, they were the drivers and major um, people that completed the, the newly reworked, reworked um, Nebraska Guide. Um, and then we also want to congratulate, I know these were awards by the Nebraska Library Association, but three of our members were honored. Jean Luckish with the Mari Sandos Award, um, Becky Pascal for Emeritus Service, and then at the Skip Luncheon on Friday, um, our former president, mm -hmm. and she's still on the board, it's a liaison, um, Judy Hunt <laughs> Henning was honored as a Mad Hatter. So we just wanted to make sure they got recognition. And I thank you for this opportunity of sharing our highlights. Mm -hmm. That's always a fun event, the Mad Hatter Award presentation. They always, I, I was out there peeking at it when it was going on in the <laughs> afternoon. I think I was running on doing other things, but it was very exciting. <laughs> I always consider that um, another highlight of the conference. It's just fun to um, be part of it, and I'm always amazed at how incredibly talented um, librarians in the state of Nebraska are and all the many things that they can accomplish. Cool. Thanks, Karen. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. sessions and or anything that's going on in the conference that you were uh, well I want to I want to mention gaming night sure of course. Gaming, gaming night was fun um, <laughs> I, I gotta admit it was um, it's fun. I go to gaming nights at larger conferences and I see many many more people and and we had about 25 or 30 people come and at first I was thinking oh this is a very big crowd but I thought about it, if, if you look at percentages um, to the larger conferences, about 5 to 10% of people show up to gaming mm -hmm. night. And we had about 5 to somewhere between 5 and 10% of people at our conference show up. Yeah. So, so I think that worked out pretty well. <coughs> um, I don't know if I was surprised or not, but I noticed that the, the board and card games seem to be more popular than video games they were, this yes. year. Um, we had Apples to Apples. Apples to Apples was going. Two, um, ver two games of Scrabble going at the same time. Librarians of Scrabble. Multiple boards available. Are, are, are you surprised by <laughs> yeah. this? No. Um, uh, although and I was. Huh? I was going to say, I was introduced to the card game Flux. Yes. And, I, I, I saw I, some posts. I've gone out and Flux. bought the Monty Python. All right. Versions because I have <laughs> a son and daughter in law that that's going to make a perfect Christmas present or stocking stuffer. Yes, wait, wait till you get <laughs> to the singing room. 
Uh, yeah, flux. Flux is a very great, uh, great card game. I, I enjoyed a lot. Where the the rules are constantly changing, and mm. and I uh, I uh, credit a, a friend of mine from the West Des Moines Public Library for uh, uh, teaching me that game. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's many versions of it. Monty Python being one of them. There's Zombie Flux, which I also I I, I like the zombie version. Um, and then uh, sh sh shall we mention the special game of Scrabble that broke out? Oh, near the end of the night as it got late, they ended up with a dirty word scrabble going on. Um, that's, and, that's all I'll say. And, yeah, well, and, and don't make assumptions about the ages involved. No. Uh, no. You know, it was multi-generational. Let's, let's, let's put it that way. It was a lot of fun. And I yep. think I also <laughs> like the way we had it set up. And it wasn't on purpose. Excuse it was me. just because the rooms were available. The card and board games in one room and the video games in a separate room. I know in other conferences I've gone to, you have everything in one big room, and sometimes it's hard to hear it's when you're loud. playing. It's loud because you've got the video games going, which are loud, and that's the point of them when you're doing your your wee bowling and whatnot or your um, rock band. Um, but then people behind them on tables trying to play board games, it's hard to hear. And ours, we ended up having them in two separate rooms just connected, but and it was awesome. They could yep. make the noise and play the songs in the one room, but then the other people could play in the card games and the board games in the other room, and I thought that made because... I just, we did our conference, and then two weeks later I went to an internet librarian where they had a gaming night, and it was a little it, annoying. I it was like, it was a little hard to teach people. I, I was teaching yeah. people to play Flux there, too, and the video games going out at the same time. You and did kind of have to raise ended, your voice. ended up <laughs> taking people, things out into the hallway to play because it was easier to hear. So I think we got lucky <laughs> with that, and I hope we can do that again, have somewhere where we have a situation when we do it next year here in Lincoln of two separate rooms for mm. each type of gaming so that we can um, enjoy what we can do. It's nice to have an, um, evening program. fun evening to do. So. First in Lincoln, everybody will go shopping. Yeah, well. <laughs> we'll <do that. laughs> I just have to send out the pre-conference blurb on, you know, learn to play Flux with Michael Sowers and oh. everybody will be there. There you go, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. It sounds like fun, especially if there's a Monty Python version. I mean, how can you lose? <laughs> there, yeah, the Monty Python version is, is sometimes amusing when, when, when you have different people with, with different levels of knowledge of Monty Python. Ah. Because there are roles involving speaking in funny accents and quoting lines and, and singing songs. And uh, if if you're not as versed in Monty Python, it's a, it's a little harder. But uh, but that doesn't prevent you from winning necessarily. Yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes you just have to invent your own silly walk, and you're good to go. There you go. Nobody will know. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's right. One thing that this conference did bring up is the challenge of as our group continues to grow, which is really exciting. We had over 500 people, I believe, registered for conference this year. And um, is that we need to strive in the future to find sites that not only fit the size of the group but the needs of the conference. Mm -hmm. And certainly um, as we do our conference wrap-up in a week or so with the planning group, we will add that to um, the planning manual. <clears throat> so that just stays in um, everybody's, uh, I guess, line of sight for future conference planning. Mm -hmm. It is difficult in, in a place like Nebraska <coughs> where once you're outside of the Lincoln Omaha area, you've got a large group and you want to be out there towards the west, it's really hard. Mm -hmm. They don't just have the facilities. I mean, maybe they will the next time we're out. Um, Carney, Carney now has a facility. I'm not sure oh. if it's quite open yet, but will be shortly. But that should be a much there. better Pardon me? By the time we're out there, it's going to be a couple of years before we have to go out that way again. Right. I believe we're back out in card in the uh, middle of the state in 2013. Mm -hmm. And the new Eunice Conference Center should be able to accommodate us plus. Yeah. So, <coughs> yeah. So something to look forward to. And I uh, appreciate everybody's patience and understanding with the challenges of two sites this year. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. And, and it's everybody has experience from being there before. That that's just the that, just what you have to do with you know going back and forth between the hotels. Right. Karen, you were saying something. Oh, I was just going to say, and, and kind of going along with just attending the conference, it's just a powerful thing for librarians. Um, I think the networking opportunities are great. Um, I'm the sole librarian in my school, so it's really great for me to have the opportunity mm -hmm. to visit with 
librarians across the straight, uh, across the st state. Um, I think that's really an important aspect, and I found that the more involved I've been with NEMA, um, and the more involved I am with the conference, um, the more I get out of it. Um, I, I've been going to the banquets. I've been doing the, at least pre-conference fun activity, and it's just such a greater experience by doing more. But I want to emphasize that too, and encourage others to be active and know that they are welcome at all activities. Absolutely, yeah. Um, just because something is hosted by either NLA or NEMA doesn't mean you shouldn't go to it. I mean, I bounce around to anything that looks interesting when mm -hmm. I have the time to attend things. <laughs> and we're hoping with a new um, affiliate membership for NEMA members to join NLA, that would encourage them to participate hopefully, you know, more fully in conference and take advantage of those opportunities that NLA and um, the Commission present throughout the year as well. I think that's a wonderful opportunity that NLA is making <coughs> possible for NEMA members. Yeah, and that's actually a suggestion that came out of the Omaha, or the La Vista conference. Right. People were having discussions there at conference, and look what happened, we got something done, so. Another good reason to attend a conference. You can change your, your professional association by having those conference meetings uh, out in the hallway. So. Well, you know, and, I, and, and I'll, I guess I'll just reiterate that. I, I, as much as I enjoy going to conferences for the sessions and as much as I present sessions that I appreciate the people attend, I somehow always seem to get just a little bit more out of lobby con, uh, you know, out of the hallway, to sit, <laughs> talking to people in between, um, just the, you know, the people that you don't necessarily run into more than once or twice a year at these sort of events, mm -hmm. and they're like, hey, I'm doing this, or I'm looking for somebody to do that, or I've got this great idea, and just the, the I always come back with this list of, or stack of business cards of people to follow up with. Mm -hmm on something that we talked about in the hallway or in between a session or, or at a banquet that um, fills my to-do list for the next month. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I get that. I get that a lot. I used to work more at the booth, at the commission's booth, and there you get constantly people coming by looking for somebody from the commission to do something. <coughs> and definitely mm -hmm. get lots of work done there, even though you're at conference. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. So any other sessions, any other things about the conference that you want to highlight and mention to people? The other one I heard great things about was the art of the Caldecott, where he talked about the art um, kind of through the ages and the changing um, through the years and how the art followed trends and how it's different, you know, oh, yeah. today than obviously when that award was um, established. Oh yeah. And um, oh, that was a two-part session too. Okay, wow. It was. It was a long one, and um, our youth services librarian was able to go and thoroughly enjoyed that. So. That was a good one. Well, another good one I intended was, uh, I'm trying to remember who the presenter was, but it was the history of the book. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this is like the third in a three-part. She's, she's done one last year and the year before that. And she does one every year. And it just, it's so many interesting things about, you know, we learned that uppercase came from the fact that movable type, they have the larger letters in the upper cabinet, so it's the uppercase. And just... The history of the book uh, is very entertaining, and I learned a lot from it. And hopefully she's doing another step in history uh, next session. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll see if I can. Wait, I yeah, missed that one. I see. That does huh? seem very cool. Yeah. So if, if Dr. Siegler is, is on the agenda for next conference. That's one I would encourage you to go. She's a great speaker and very entertaining. Great. 
always like those kind of different kind of things that get tossed in. And you've always got the how to do this, how to do that for all the practical things for working in your libraries and whatnot. But then you get something that's just fun and different. And you're like, wow, that will you know, be a nice break from all this um, more serious stuff. Mm -hmm. So any, um, we're getting down to the end of our time here. Any uh, last minute comments or... Anybody from the audience have any questions? We have a small audience today, but <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Or anything that you and the audience want to say about your, if you did attend. I would just encourage people that if they think they have, you know, we're all doing great things out in our libraries. Be willing to share that with your colleagues for next year because those calls for proposal will probably go out, you know, after the first of the year, obviously. Mm -hmm. And we have the theme set for next year, which is Nebraska Libraries Cultivating Community Connections. And so Jan and Karen will be working on that. Mm. And one of our keynote speakers will be, ja <clears throat> will be Jamie LaRue from Colorado who did the... Um, the leadership reunion workshop. So, looking forward to having him come out. I, I know Jamie, We're up. and and he's always wonderful to listen to. <laughs> right, he, and you never know quite what's gonna. It's yeah. <laughs> so game for what whatever topics um, we feel are focus. So, that's good. Okay, yeah. So that will be the 2011 conference, which will be here in Lincoln. Um, earlier in the month than usual, um, the 5th through the 7th. That's correct. And then I think our other guest speaker is going to be Cassandra Barnett. Um, she's from Fayetteville, Arkansas, was a uh, one of the two presenters at the Heartland School Librarians Conference this summer and is just finishing her term as president of the American Association of School Librarians. Mm -hmm. She's dynamic, and I know that anyone that was fortunate to attend our summer conference will be looking forward to hearing more from her. Hmm. Okay, very good to get a preview of what's and coming next year. Yeah, and I, I wanted to second Christie's um, about being a presenter, and one of the things that kind of arose in some of my small groups was that you don't have to feel that you're the best that does it. We just, you know, share what you know, and people, um, if you allow them in, that attend your sessions will be glad to contribute too, but, you know, please, please, please take that step and offer to be a presenter. Absolutely, yeah. There's always somebody that you can learn from, like what Michael was saying about it. You, you never know. And, and I will happily give up several of my speaking spots to somebody who hasn't done it before. <laughs> <laughs> Noble sacrifices for the cause. <laughs> yes. Uh, although speaking, you know, it's a great thing to do. I mean, even if, if it's not you know, required by your job. Just okay. taking that step forward, I think, you know, I don't know, Michael, if you remember the first time you ever presented at a conference, it's scarier than heck, but oh. when you're done, it's, it's a great feeling. Yeah, and it was a room of 400 people, too. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Now, that's a start. I mean, well, I, I, had done, I had done workshops, so I mean, I, I'd spoken in front of smaller groups, but my first real conference presentation was at a Computers and Libraries in D.C., and there was 400 people in the room, mm -hmm. and it was 20 minutes on what was usually a six-hour workshop, and so, yeah, it was a bit stressful, um, but, you know, I, I have yet to see anybody at a library conference throw something at the speaker. <laughs> uh, I, you know, um, we're too polite for that, I think. But, uh, you know, it, it's, it makes it a great conference to do your first session at. Oh, yeah. Yeah, start here, start small, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you can work up to the, um, going to some of the larger ones. Well, and, and I've gotten, you know, other work out of conference mm -hmm. sessions, including book publishing, where somebody says, hey, great session, you want to turn it into a book. <coughs> Excuse me. So, I mean, you know, it, presenting can open up, you know, your your, your career in, into doing other yeah, things. It's another version of doing professional development for yourself, improving yourself, what you're doing in your job, learning new things, um, definitely. And um, also, it, it, 
don't hold me to this, but there's there's some sort of rule with CE credit here at the commission where if you actually instead of attending something, you actually do something like a presentation. Yeah, you can you, earn for that. You as get well, double yeah. CE credit the first time you do it. Mm -hmm. So you know if you're if you're looking for some extra CE credit, give a presentation, teach a workshop, uh, then you'll you'll uh, mm -hmm. get a little ahead. I, I think I got my three year accreditation in one week because <laughs> I was teaching workshops. <laughs> The accreditation that you don't use for anything. Yeah, well. But whatever. Yeah, it looks nice <laughs> on the wall. <laughs> it looks like we lost a couple of people there. Oh. Okay. All right. Well, I think um, looks like a couple of people got dumped out because all of a sudden, uh, Karen we're, and we're down to just Jen the speaker. Left. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Karen's gone too. Oh wait, uh -oh. no. Sorry, you're on the other no, side. I'm, I'm Never here. mind. I'm you're still here. on. Never mind. <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> um, okay, so I think um, anybody has any last uh, thoughts? Thank you again for everybody who presented and attended. Yes, definitely. Um, I think it was a great conference. I had a lot of fun staying out there for the two, three days that we were there. Um, and hopefully next year you'll join us here in Lincoln, as I said, October 5th through 7th, the 2011 conference. And you already heard a preview of what some of two of the um, special speakers will be. Um, and next week, as I said, also related to conference, um, Sally Snyder will be redoing um, her Best New Youth Books of 2010 session that she did do at conference. So if you're unable to attend that, you can see Sally do it again um, here on Encompass Live. So, there's nothing else. I'm good. Cool. Thank you very much, uh, Karen, Christy, and Scott. I think this was a great session. Um, and maybe we'll do this again next year, either as a preview or a wrap-up afterwards for the conference. Uh, so, thank you very much. And thank we'll you, too, Krista. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. Thanks. I'm glad it all worked out for everyone to get logged in <laughs> and be yes. here for us. All the tech it's always nice when the technology works for everyone. We should be so lucky all the time. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you, Krista. Bye-bye. Bye. Goodbye. -bye. Bye.